so many loving memories of Aaron. It's almost hard to start. At an age of about a couple of months to a year old, she had this this character, this... Sparkle. Yeah, it was a sparkle. Erin <laughs> was always a really happy little girl, full of energy, persistence, the drive to do her best all the time. And um, people loved to be around her. She was fun. She, uh, she really wanted to help others. She always wanted to find a way to do something for somebody. I think Erin uh, really wanted to go to law school to make a difference. She um, wanted to stand up for the person who really needed the help, who um, couldn't defend themselves. And um, she was strong and wanted to bring that strength to other people. When applying to law school, she knew that the University of Maryland Carey School of Law was really a great fit for her, that it offered an opportunity for her to go into the community and make change even before she became a lawyer. And she was really looking forward to that. Erin, through no fault of her own, but by being good and trusting, was taken advantage of. As Erin's father, when I found out about Erin's rape, I was completely crushed and um, destroyed. And as a as a as her father I felt helpless and extremely victimized and I felt so terrible for Aaron that there was really nothing that I could really do. Aaron really wanted to be able to help others and not having to realize this pain. She got sick during her senior year of college and she had already been accepted to law school and she was so excited to attend and as her treatments went on, she really thought she'd be fine to attend law school in the fall and then found that she couldn't because her treatments were going to continue. Some nights, Erin really couldn't sleep, even though she was so tired. And I would ask her, what is keeping you up at night? And um, before uh, she ever had cancer and we had found out um, that she had been raped, we, I knew she had had night terrors and um, just horrible dreams and she couldn't sleep. So I asked her, I said, well, is this, I said, can you not sleep because um, you're afraid to die or is it something else? And she says, it's really the rape that keeps me from sleeping, not death. To her, that was worse. The hardest part was the realization that the outcome wasn't too good. And that was the hardest thing to deal with because the thing that she really wanted to do was to, her goal in life was to be able to really enrich in others' lives. Naren also always wanted to be remembered. She would say, well, like once I'm gone, is everyone gonna forget that I was here? I had so much I wanted to do. And I said, no one will ever forget you. And we're, through this Aaron Levitas initiative, we're really trying to make sure that Aaron is not forgotten and we're gonna continue the work she had in mind to do if she could have been here. We have an epidemic in this country with sexual violence and what is particularly scary, um, I think to parents and to people involved in this area, is how this is, is becoming more and more prevalent at younger and younger ages. Erin wanted to come to law school so that she could represent people who had been subjected to sexual violence. That dream shouldn't die with her. What we've done is create a program that honors her desire to see this kind of violence end. We live in a very punitive society, which isn't working for kids and it's not working around these issues of sexual violence either. Instead, what we're trying to do is help hold people accountable and building that capacity, providing supports for the offenders to step up and try to repair the harm. I have seen what restorative justice can do in the context of gender-based violence, and there are programs across the world that are doing this work. The United States is really behind in this work, and it's time for us to think about ways that we can address this kind of behavior other than through the kind of punitive systems that we have in place. And what we're doing is actually using our students to go out into the communities, into schools, and support 
the K through 12 students. In some cases, it can be mediation, actually mediating conflicts. In other cases, it can be training them in skills to be peer mediators, student mediators. I think this program builds on so many great opportunities. The opportunity to engage young people, the opportunity to engage our future generation of leaders, and the opportunity to make people realize that sexual violence is an epidemic, but it's an epidemic that we can work to eliminate. It's an epidemic that we can work with our students in the community to reduce.